Hey everybody, today we are going to go over different ways of selection in Photoshop. And this is just kind of a general overview of the different ways you can isolate different areas of your piece. So I'm going to start here by moving my layers palette to the side so it's very visible. And I have this picture of a businessman here and we're going to discuss maybe different ways of taking out this target area and replacing it with other items. So let me just kind of unpeel that real quick and stretch it out. There it goes. Looking good. And we are good to go. All right. So now that we're ready, what we're going to do is the first method is we're going to just kind of work down our timeline here. The first method is what we want to use is the marquee tool. Now the marquee tool is good for basic selections. So if I just simply grab this area or if I hold down my left mouse button and get the elliptical and I'm going to hold the shift key and grab that circle that's a really good way to isolate that selection and when you isolate selections with the marquee tool there's a lot of different ways around um, around keeping it separate so the first way is using masks which we'll get into in a bit uh, a destructive way of editing meaning it's going to hurt the image is if you right click and while you're, I call these the marching ants, while your marching ant tool is active and do layer via cut and layer via copy, layer via copy will create a new layer simply with that item right on it. And that's a really good way to isolate a selection. Uh, another way which we'll get into is masks and that's the more non-destructive and more professional way to do it. Now those are your elliptical marquees, your rectangles, you have a single column those are great for large areas. For instance, if I want to cut out half of this image, I could simply do that. Now the lasso tool is if you want to refine it. Now if you want to refine a selection, you would simply get your lasso tool and hold down your left mouse button and trace around the area you want to define. Now this takes a lot of practice to get it right and you know it, it's not the end of the world if you don't get it right on the first try. But that's one way of selecting a specific area. Now, there are many different types of lassos. One's the polygon lasso. This tends to be a little more linear. You can see the, uh, the sharp edges. And when you're using this, if you hit the escape key, I'll actually go back, let's hit command D. It, while you're using this, if you do a point you don't like, simply hit the delete key and it will delete that point. So let's say I do this. I don't like that point there and hit delete it will take me back and I can simply go. Now I use this one actually quite often I don't use it for a final finish I kinda use it to rough out my area and uh, it kind of saves me some time sometimes. Now while you're using this at any point if you hold the option key on a Mac um, or actually excuse me the uh, the command key if I was right the option key sorry about that guys even I have to double check sometimes. It will turn itself to the uh, the regular lasso tool. So you can see when I hold held the option key down and held down, it switched itself to a more linear uh, or less linear tool. And when I go away from that, it actually is a lot sharper. You double click, it will great create the selection. You're good to go. I'm going to hit Command D to get out of this. So again, if you're drawing and you feel like you want to get a little crazy and use the regular lasso tool, hold down the option key or alt key on a PC. Draw. I'm just simply holding my left mouse button down at all times. Let go when you're ready to go back to the straight edge one. You're good to go. Double click if you want to close the selection and you're set. Finally you have, I'm holding my left or my right mouse button down to get this, your magnetic lasso tool. Now another cool little trick is if you want to navigate through these you'll notice they have a shortcut and that's L. Well if I hold, if I hit delete here, if I hold shift and L, notice my icon when I do this. Let everyone look up here while I, I'm holding shift and the L key as in Larry and it's going through all those different items so that's really really nice. Um, the magnetic lasso tool will actually attach itself to an individual color of pixel so that's kinda neat. Um, it tends as you can see to get a little bit off but it's close enough so if I double click here not too bad 
I don't like this one as much because even though it seems easier, I don't think it has a, as much control and it does leave a quite uh, jagged edge. You can see some of the jaggedness here in the selection. So I'm going to hit Command D uh, to deselect. Now, I mentioned this in class. If you're going to choose to use one, let's say the regular lasso tool, and you mess up, do not redraw your selection. So if I mess up like this, simply add to it. To add to a selection, you're going to hold the Shift key. And when you hold a Shift key down, you simply continue going. I'm holding the Shift key and my left mouse button. I'm going to let go. That adds that area. And I'll do the same thing here. Trace over it, added that area, and so forth. So if you want to add a selection, simply trace. And if I'm going to add this, I actually can go inside here and make it kind of messy. And you'll get used to this. You know, just you'll just start circling things. If you want to subtract from a selection, use the command key. So I highlight the area I want to go away. I can subtract. And adding and subtracting, that works with any of these selections. In, in other words, the marquee, it works with the lasso, and it works with that magic wand we used with Chuck Norris. And that magic wand tool, will, I'm holding a, a shift here, will take specific areas and kind of add to them. So that's kind of neat. Um, and those are basically your basic selections. Uh, crop, crop isn't really a selection tool. I mean, it, it works as one. You can shrink the image. You can take a specific area and crop it. But overall, the marquee, the lasso, and the magne magnetic lasso are the ones you're going to use. Now, if we hop down to our uh, second kind of subdivision in our toolbar, we have the brush. Now, the brush is easily controlled by the brush size. What I like to do is everyone locate the P key on your keyboard. Look for the P key, any keyboard, Mac, or PC. Once you see the P key, you'll see bracket keys next to it. Now. You can see that my brush is kind of small. Everyone hit their the furthest bracket key away. So there's going to be two keys next to your P key. They look like brackets. Both those keys will control the size of your brush. And this is a really great resource. Makes it bigger, makes it smaller. It's the same thing as going up to brush size and changing it. Brushes also come in hard and soft. So that may affect what you select here as well. Well, with your brush selected, if you hit Q, as in quiz, on your keyboard, you'll go into quick mask mode. And there's a few th reasons I know I'm in quick mask. One, it says quick mask here. Two, this is pushed in. If I want to get out of quick mask, I can simply hit that, or you can see the shortcut that says edit in quick mask mode, and in parentheses it says Q, and I'll go from there. Now, with that selected, quick mask actually paints on this area. Now, if you try to paint here, not much is going to happen. The reason nothing is happening is because I'm on white. In Quick Mask, if I let me hit X on my keyboard or hit simply switch foreground and background colors, I'm going to go to black. You'll notice black will paint. Now, a common mistake people make while doing this is as they're they're painting in Quick Mask mode, basically they either get too sloppy or they're actually not in quick mask mode. I actually have this happen a lot with students. They'll think they hit Q and then they'll start painting and be like, okay, I'm, I'm masking, when in fact you're actually just spray painting on top of your, uh, your selected area. For quick mask, what I like to do is double click on quick mask on this little icon and I change mine from masked areas to selected areas, meaning everything I paint is selected. You can turn your opacity down to 50, you can keep it to 100. I usually go somewhere in the middle, like 75. So what this has done is basically said wherever I paint with black while this is activated, make sure that is the selection. So in other words, I'll hit my quick mask, I'll begin to paint, and while you're painting, a good rule of thumb is always change your brush size. I'm using the bracket keys next to the P key, and basically go down through the process. And it's not going to be perfect, but get as close as you possibly can. So once I have that, good to go. I'm going to hit Q once more, and now I have a selection. Really great tool. Now I can combine these tools. I can go to my lasso tool now, and if I want to maybe, let's not do our lasso, let's go to our elliptical marquee tool, M, right here. 
If I want to subtract this middle red circle, I can simply hold my Option key or Alt on a PC, click and drag, and now that middle part is taken away. And that's what I'm going to do. So that's how you would add and subtract from a selection. Uh, you can also do it the opposite way. So I'm going to hit Command D or go to Select, Deselect. You can also inverse a selection, so that will grab everything outside of it. But what we're going to do now is maybe use the lasso tool, grab our selection, just trace it. We'll do it roughly. There we go. And now that we've done that, we're going to hit Q, and you'll notice it's painted uh, because it's in quick mask. And so we can go to our brush or B for brush and begin to paint these areas in. Now, if you want to remove from a quick mask selection, it's actually really easy. You hit X, switch that color to white, and simply erase away. So these are really good techniques for adding and subtracting. Now, people will ask you, well, what's your favorite method of selection? Well, my answer would be there is none. I like to use a combination of all of them. Using a combination of all of them will make you a better artist and have, make you have better workflow. So knowing when to switch back and forth between, hit X here, between the uh, different brushes um, will help you a lot in the long run. So, there we go. Q, perfect. All right. So that's how um, using these different methods of a selection. The last one we're going to go over is the pen tool. The pen tool is actually one of the more common ones you'll use in industry because of the control. Um, it gives you a per very precise, a very sharp edge. And the pen tool simply creates control vertices or control points. And these little control points can be clicked very close together for areas that are close. They can be if I hold my left mouse button down, they can be dragged and they can have Bezier handles. Um, there's a lot of different methods to use the uh, pen tool for. And if you're ever looking for accuracy, maybe for your uh, first project coming up, uh, you would use the pen tool because the pen tool will always give you a really, really nice line. Now, the pen tool kind of differs because it's not so much giving you a selection. What it's doing is giving you essentially something called a path. So it's basically drawing an invisible line um, around the selection you're making. You have to convert the path to a selection. And I'll show you how to do that as soon as I finish uh, selecting my area here. Okay, so you can see not a lot happened. It doesn't have the marching ant tools. Um, if I zoom in, I'm going to hit Z for zoom. I have some areas where I could fix. So to fix those areas, I, I'm going to use my arrow tool, not the move tool. Uh, the move tool is here at the top. I'm going to use the arrow tool. And you'll notice if you click on the arrows, you can actually select these individual pins. And these are really, really nice. And it, you can now see the benefits. So let's look at this finger here. We need to get the arch of the finger. So to do this, I'm going to hold down my arrow, and I get a black arrow. Well, the black arrow doesn't do too much. What it will actually do is move your whole path. I'm going to hit Command-Z to go back. What we want to do is hold down the left key on the pen tool and go to the carrot tool. Like, what's up, Doc? That kind of carrot. Uh, I co uh, it's Photoshop calls it the convert point tool. A lot of people will call it the carrot tool. That tool is really interesting because all you do is highlight the control point and simply hold it down, click and drag, and it will create that Bezier handle. And you know what? When you're done with those Bezier handles, you can simply go back to your direct selection tool and click and drag on its respected dot. Even grab the handle and adjust that separately as well. So what I tend to do is I tend to clean up areas. Um, I may need to add points or subtract points. If I need to do that, what I can, what I find the most easy is I'll hold down this, I'll add an anchor point tool, and I will grab it and pull it in. So you can add and subtract these points. The more points you have, the, the bigger the file size actually tends to be. But uh, I usually end up deleting my path after I'm done using it. And you can see it's really a quick method of refinement. Um, it's a little more sophisticated uh, kind of choice in, in uh, your arsenal here. 
So let me finish this up a little bit. And I tend to be a perfectionist. You guys will learn this. Um, even when I'm trying to go fast or not as fast. And I just realized that is not even part of the shirt. And that's his white shirt, I should say. Okay, once I have this, I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to go to Paths. And when I find Paths, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, Paths will show up usually down here. So let me close up my border palette here. And here is my work path. Now, if I double-click that, it just simply wants me to name it. If I right-click on it, I can make it a selection, fill the path or stroke the path, meaning add a line around it. Uh, fill means it will fill it in. And these buttons are also contained down here. And if you hover over them, there you go. You can see the, uh, the colors. So pretty good stuff. Okay, I'm going to use make a selection. Now that I have a selection, what I can do is isolate this selection. So I can make that a mask. I can do whatever I need. The best part is if I hit Command-D, it's still going to be there. It's going to be there for later use, so that's really good. So let's do uh, a quick mask, and I'll show you the non-destructive way, and I'll call this original. And I'm going to duplicate it by dragging it to a new layer, and I'm going to call this mask. And what we're going to do is actually go to our work path, make it a selection. Same thing as right-clicking make selection. And once we make it a selection, we can even go to select and modify. We can shrink it, we can expand it, we can feather it. We can refine edge. This is a cool one. Refine edge is neat because it lets you see what you've selected and it will allow you to put a radius on it. It will allow you to smooth it. So if you have hard edges, feather it so you'll soften the edges. Um, contrast will, will shrink them. Shifting edges will shrink them either way as well and so forth. We're going to just stick with this and I'm going to hit my mask tool. And what my mask tool will do is what's white will show up What's black won't. Don't get that confused with the quick mask. They are not the same thing. Quick mask is for selection. Your mask tool is to isolate something so it's purely that's the only visible thing. So you can see that's visible. If we were to invert this, edit, <clears throat> excuse me, image adjustments invert, it would be the opposite. There would be nothing in the middle and so forth. So what you can see now is this is a very non-destructive way of erasing, perhaps, the, uh, the inside of this, this character. And we can put anything we want in there. If we wanted to put a picture of somebody's face or even simply create a new layer, call it color. And remember, black does not show up. And paint in there. We can now paint that. And it will only show up within the mask. And that's a really kind of neat um, illusion. So hopefully this has helped. You've learned the different types of selection. This is going to be with you for all the time that you use Photoshop. And um, good luck on using it.